Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to have an overview of the Google Ads interface, the menu and some of the pages. So if you are somehow new to Google Ads and you feel overwhelmed with the UI, this video is for you. This is the new interface of Google Ads. It was started rolling out to some accounts in the later months of 2023 and now that we are in June 2024, I think now it is the, uh, the default interface in all Google Ads accounts. There is a still an option on the top, Appearance, that you can switch to the old UI design for the time being. I'm still myself not very comfortable with the new design and sometimes wondering where I, I can find a specific page. What I specifically don't like the new design is that sometimes you have to make more clicks to get to your cat to your page in the previous design let me show you uh, clicking on appearance use previous design for this session uh, i will just uh, going to choose one of these uh, options in the previous design the uh, the tools and settings were located on the top menu bar and you could have seen all subcategories in one glance it made it very easy to find what you were looking for but right now going to the new design again the tools has moved to the left menu and if you want to find a specific page you need to make a, an extra click to see those sub pages and personally i don't like this very much something that is very useful in the uh, new interface is this search a bar at the top um, you can search for what you are looking sometimes if you don't find you cannot find the page that you are looking for just uh, try to search by keyword for example let's say conversion action if it can find something conversion goal probably can be helpful so try to get used to this uh, search bar at the top The menus are located on the left, campaigns, goals, tools, billing, and admin. Uh, by default, uh, it shows the campaigns menu. And the first page that you will see after opening the account is the overview page. In this page, there are some summary of your campaigns, metrics, and KPIs, how many clicks, impression, uh, cost you had in a certain time period. Last 30 days, you can change the time period here by selecting on the uh, time module it has some charts you can see the number of conversions I, I've had here 12 conversion in the last 30 days there are some top level insights lead funnel uh, auction insights uh, the performance based on the day and hour of the uh, day the top searches based on uh, impressions clicks conversion you can choose these are my top searches that have brought the most clicks into uh, clicks and impressions into my account uh, any data that you want you can download them uh, as a csv file or even as an image mm. there are more insights here such as device performance the performance based on the computer mobile phone or tablets keyboard performance each card uh, gives you some uh, top level insights uh, but to see the details uh, you can see the details of all these uh, cards all these widgets in their specific pages too so overall the overview page is just as the name uh, suggests it's just an overview you it's got, it gives you overview of your account how your campaigns are doing it's not something that you want to change or uh, really improve the performance. It's just some top level insights. Now we are going to go to other pages. I'm not going to go based on the order that uh, Google has created here. The order is overview, recommendation, insight and reports, campaigns. The second page that we are going to have a review is the campaign page here. 
it has campaigns, ad groups, ads, experiment and campaign groups. Campaigns is probably the page that you will uh, deal with uh, the most among all pages in uh, in your account. This uh, this is the, shows the list of your campaigns, all the campaigns you can uh, show the status whether to show all campaigns or only the campaigns that are enabled active right now or only in when enabled and pause campaigns not the campaigns that you might have re removed any campaign uh, that you select it will go to the details of campaign for example if i'm going to select this campaign uh, the first one i just click on the campaign name it goes to the uh, ad groups list of ad groups for that campaign and and uh, again if i click on any ad groups it goes to the uh interestingly to the keywords to another page from audience and keywords i'm going back to the campaigns and as you see i had this is a uh, shows here what campaign i'm in i can click uh, on all campaigns go, to go back to all campaigns in my account and if you select one campaign uh, here on the more details uh, you can see some settings of the campaign settings like language and conversion goal and if you click on the editing settings you can go to the settings of the campaign and change any settings that you want locations or bidding strategies or any other setting i'm going back to the campaign page now uh if you click on ad groups uh, let me go to the campaigns page if you click on the ad groups you will see the list of your ad groups their performance and uh, in the interface interface of campaign page or ad groups there are some options here uh, that will give you more details you can segment your campaign performance uh, i'm an ad group let me go to the campaign here you can segment your campaign performance let's say by time uh, hour of the day here it will give you the performance based on each hour uh, or any other data you can segment data by device to see the performance of each campaign based on uh, each device whether computer or uh, cell phones or tablets and here to remove the segment just click on that and click on the none the columns uh, you have the option to change which columns you want to see just click on the columns you have uh, an option here modify columns you can select which columns you want to show in your view by default uh, because there are so many columns and dimensions and metrics you can just search here for your col column that you are looking for for example I'm looking for CTR, I can search for CTR, click to rate. And you have the option also after you order your columns based on what you like uh, to save your column set uh, based on your name. What I did here, I have saved the column set. So I can always, uh, if my column set changes i can select uh, the one the, the saved one here is my name and go back to the one that i selected i have another video uh in my channel that i will uh, order my columns uh, in a very efficient way if you are looking for a uh, guideline to how to show your co column display your column view here how you set the order of your columns I would suggest to watch that video too. You can download this uh, campaign here uh, based on the CSV file or any other option that you want interested or export it to Google Sheet. Uh, there is a filter option here that you can filter to see uh, a specific campaign. For example, I can filter to show uh campaigns that for example have an average cost more than 100 dollars in 200 dollars in the past 30 days and 
if you have so many campaigns, this filter option can help you a lot. When you filter the campaigns, uh, it will show you the performance only for those filtered campaigns that can be very helpful. The other options that we have in the campaigns uh, page here, we have campaigns, ad groups, as I said, you can see the list of ad groups ads all ads in your account because i didn't select any special specific campaign it's, it's showing all my uh ad copy here ads and uh, rsa responsive search ads if i want to see any a specific ad i need to go to the campaign page select a campaign here go inside the campaign or i can select a campaign here on the top menu the other one experiment and this is where you can create a b test experiments in your account for example uh, you want to test let's say b the strategy uh, between target cpa or target roas to see which one is uh, working better for you you can create a 50 50 experiment here and 50 percent of your budget goes to the campaign with tcpa uh, bidding strategy and 50 uh, person goes to the campaign with the target row as can be very helpful experiments uh, but you need to know how to use it how to run an experiment and how to read data and how to decide on a winner or another use case for example you want to test a campaign for match type keywords you want to have a campaign 50 percent of your bad budget on campaigns for the uh, for keywords with exact and phrase match type or oh, and 50 percent uh 50 percent of the budget allocated to campaign to the keyword broad match keywords and after let's say 30 days after 60 days when you have enough data you can uh, decide which match type is bringing you better results so you will continue only uh for that a specific campaign to create an experiment you click on this plus button and you create your experiment there is another option here add variation uh, add variation is similar to experiment but it's uh, just specific for add uh, copy for all for experiment custom experiment uh, when you are running an experiment you will have two campaigns one campaign your uh, base campaign and the other one your trial campaign something you that you change for example be the strategy so we'll, you will run two campaigns side by side with different setting. But for the ad variation, uh, you will have only one campaign uh, and just test two ad variation, two ad copy in that one campaign in, in each ad group. So for an ad, ad variation, uh, all the other settings of the campaign is the same. So you don't need to set, uh, set to have a second campaign. You can have uh, two ad variations, uh, one default ad, one the experiment in the same campaign. And performance max experiment is when you have a search campaign and you run to, you want to run an experiment with performance max to see how performance max will perform for you, whether it's for worth running performance max or not. The other page that we have here in, here in the campaigns is campaign groups. Campaign groups is when you have multiple campaigns with the same target. You can create a same a one campaign group to include all those uh, ca different campaigns in the one campaign group and set a performance target for a batch of campaigns. Or for example, you have three campaigns. They are uh, you decided to separate them in for different reasons, maybe uh, target different locations. You have one campaign for, let's say, United States, one campaign for Canada, and one campaign for Europe. Uh, but the, all the keywords and everything is the same, only location is different. And you can create a campaign group and set a performance target for that campaign across all those uh, locations. And in the campaign page, uh, uh, if you want to create a campaign, you need to go to the campaign and start creating your campaign here, a new campaign. 
So as I said, this campaign's uh, menu campaign page is where you will spend probably your mo most time on Google Ads. You need to be to become very comfortable with these uh, pages. The next one that I want to review is this page, Audiences, Keywords, and Content. Uh, search keywords. Google has decided, you know, in the new interface to put keywords in a different uh, per, uh, place than campaigns, but I, I, I would prefer to have keywords in the campaigns uh, because uh, logically you go to the campaign, ad group, and then keyword. So it would probably make it easier if they move keyword back to the under ad group here. Anyway, keywords is are all your keywords that you are targeting in your campaigns, their status, everything is the same as a campaign and ad group page here. You can segment your data, you can download, you can create a report, uh, and you can change the order of columns. Uh, here under search keyword, by default, you will see your search keywords and we have also negative search keywords. If uh, you added some keywords uh, to your campaigns or to your account uh, as negative uh, so that your ad doesn't show for those search terms, you can see the list here. And at the bottom, uh, it's the same for every page. You can select how many rows you want to see from 10 to 500. After that, audiences, here gives you some data about the performance of audience in your campaigns. If you have added some audience segment, uh, whether first party data or third party data, uh, here in this uh, card, you will see the performance. And, uh, and there are some uh, basic uh, perform performance metrics for based on age of your audience. Uh, gender or household income might be useful in some cases if you want to exclude any age or gender that they are not performing well but most of the time you target all ages all gender and how, all household income exclusion sometimes some businesses would prefer to exclude the students uh, especially lead generation, lead uh, ge uh, generation campaigns, lead uh, B2B businesses, because some students just go to sign up uh, for those uh, softwares for their school project and they click on the ad while they don't have any intention of becoming a customer. So those businesses sometimes exclude uh, students from students from their campaigns and account. You can exclude audience here. Next one is locations. These are the locations of your uh, campaigns, the location that you selected to show your ads based on the zips and cities or reduce targeting. They are their, kind of their performance, how each location is performing. Uh, or if you have added a location exclusion, maybe you don't want your ad to show in, in any a particular location and you can add it as exclusion here and it will show here. If I select a specific campaign, let's say I uh, select one of my campaigns here and this map will appear for that campaign that you will have a visual overview of your uh, location targeting. Makes, makes it very easier to uh, ha to audit your location to make sure that you're targeting the right location or compare location dot targeting between different campaigns. I'm clicking on this small uh, widget here to reduce the size of the map. But if you are looking at all campaigns, uh, you won't see that map because the location targeting in each campaign might be different. Next one is add a schedule. If you have a scheduled your ad to show only in a particular uh, time of the week, uh, day of the week, time of the day, uh, you can uh, 
uh, select uh, adjust that are the schedule here. I haven't done that, so it doesn't show any data here for me. Uh, and the next one, advanced speed adjustment. Mm. To be honest, I'm not sure even what it is. Maybe, uh, probably it's, uh, if you want to target uh, to adjust your bid adjustment based on the device or um, things like that or location that you will see here. Uh, not not sure what exactly uh, you should expect to see here. Okay, uh, we reviewed campaigns, we reviewed audience, keywords, and content. Uh, I'm reviewing, as I said, based on the importance of these pages that you might have to deal with a lot. Is I'm not going to go, go based on the default order of Google Ads. The next one is insight and reports. Here. And uh, this, again, uh, this insight page is similar to the overview page that uh, we saw. But it gives a more detailed overview of your campaigns, top performing campaigns. And uh, sometimes it has a widget here that gives you recommendation by text. You can review search term insights. And this insight page especially is very important for performance max campaigns since uh, you don't have much insights about the performance of uh, those type of campaigns. Uh, so this insight page can give you a good overview of uh, where your ads are showing. Search trends could be interested. Uh, this uh, gives you an inter a suggested trend that you, this, you can run ads uh, for these uh, keywords or for these topics. And they are trending. People are searching for that. So insight is similar to the overview page with some details. You can change it only to last seven days and last 28 days. Next one is auction insights. Auction insights is a insight, an insight summary of your competition. The competition in your campaigns, the ones that are targeting the same keywords as yours. Or if you are running a brand campaign here, you can see what uh, other competitors are targeting your branded keyboard. So auction insights it gives you uh, will give you competitive insight about the competition. Uh, if I select a specific campaign here, I will see that okay for the uh, keywords that I'm running, there are I have these competitors that are running the same uh, that are targeting the same key. Keywords, not exactly the same, but they are targeting some of the keywords that I am using in my campaign and all the uh, in auction insights data, impression share, overlap rate. I have another video uh, that I have gone through all these uh, columns and metrics for auction insights, absolute top of page, uh, top of page rate, what they are, and how you should read this page, this auction insight, competitive insights in your uh account so if you are interested i would suggest uh watching that video too next one is search terms again uh, i would prefer to have a uh, search terms to have uh, below search keywords uh, search terms are very similar to keywords the difference is that keywords are keywords that you target uh, the for uh, the terms that you target search terms are the actual terms that people search, users search and saw your ads. So they are very uh, related to each other. So probably to me, logically, it makes sense to have them below each other. First key search keywords and then search terms. Anyway, search terms, as I said, uh, this shows the list of terms that, uh, search terms that uh, people have searched, list of terms that people search on Google uh, search uh, engine and your ad showed up, how many impressions each search term received. Uh, it's very important page really for to optimize your campaigns. I have another video uh, showing uh, how to read the search terms page and how to decide uh, what to do with them. If you don't like any search term, uh, by don't like, I mean they are underperforming, you can select them and add as a negative keyword 
so your ad doesn't won't show for that specific search term anymore going to the next one uh, anyway there is this uh, recommendation uh, uh, widget here recommendation card that you have no might have noticed that it shows in every uh, page that I go sometimes it really become irritating because it, it all just shows the same thing over and over if you want to get rid of that uh, just click on these three dots and hide it so uh, your chart will become bigger and you will have more space the next one that uh, is located here when and where your ads show uh, here are some performance data uh, full performance data for your performance based on the day of the week and hour of the day so you can see if uh, there is any time of the week or hour of the day that your ads are showing more so maybe that can help you make a decision uh, I have a another video that how you can export this data in excel files and uh, read the data here there to create a heat map and make business decisions this is uh, the default one here when ads showed what time your ads showed where ads showed is mostly about placement for video and display campaigns youtube and display campaigns that shows which websites and which YouTube and which website actually is, uh, your ads showed up your video and display campaigns the placement performance because I don't have any video and display campaign in this account uh, this page is empty for me devices is the performance by device again uh, here you can see the, perf the full performance of mobile phones computer tablet and match locations is similar to location but the difference is that uh, where the location the location of user not the location that you targeted sometimes you target a location de uh, depending on the location settings of your campaign uh, in a for example a specific in a, a specific um, location in Los Angeles or United States but the user might not really be in that location my user might search from outside location uh, it depends really on the uh, location settings of the campaign. So match location is a uh, location of your user that saw your ads. Landing page uh, is the performance of all your landing pages. Again, this shows all your campaigns. Uh, actually, one campaign because I, uh, I had previously selected one uh, specific campaign. I go to all campaigns. You can see the performance of your landing pages here and compare the performance together it can be helpful if you have multiple land landing pages in your different ad groups and keyboards stores if you have a physical uh, location you can see the performance of uh, stores uh, impressions on google uh, business profile and if it uh resulted in any website visit or log driving uh, direction from the, that gmp uh, gmb uh, google business profile report editor this is an important page that uh, you might need to use a lot uh, I have another video to show all the report templates here and the report editor template. I would recommend watch that video too. So here you can create a custom reports. You create under report, you build your own report or dashboard. You put your own metrics and row and columns and create a report and then export it to either uh, Excel file or uh, Google Sheet. Also, there are some template uh, template reports here that uh, Google has created them by default. Could, could be helpful for you uh, if you want to see the campaign performance, keyword performance. You click on any of these uh, template reports. The 
report is already built for you if you want you can even change them and still uh, customize your report and then uh, download your report Uh, dashboard is uh, similar to reports. Uh, you create a dashboard in Google Ads account uh, based on the different metrics. Uh, could be a visual performance of different uh, metrics and dimensions. Uh, could be helpful if you want to have a dashboard, but in a lot of cases, uh, because in businesses, the dashboards need to be viewed by multiple people, uh, most of them are outside Google Ads and you don't want people to just come to Google Ads every time. You don't want to give access to everybody to come look at the dashboard here. So businesses generally create the dashboards out of their Google Ads account. They export data to other data sources and create dashboards, let's say Looker Studio or Tableau or any other tools. So that's why dashboard here, uh, it's not very commonly used. Uh, I've rarely see, I've rarely seen people use the dashboard page in Google Ads. Because as I said, the purpose of dashboard is to show your data to other people. Mm, and other people don't have access to Google Ads, uh, probably not even interested to come to see, to come to the Google Ads and get overwhelmed. So you might want, need to find a more a, a simpler um, solution for uh, creating your dashboards. So uh, we reviewed all the uh, pages inside uh, under insights and reports. The next one is now we go to the recommendations. Recommendations is a uh, recommendation by Google Ads. Uh, they have all this recommendation here. They have one optimization score uh, that gives you uh, tells you what your optimization score is. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean anything, doesn't mean that if you are 100%, uh, your ads are going to perform so well, and if this is low somehow, 64%, so your performance is bad. Uh, all these recommendations are Google's recommendation. So they might not necessarily align with your objective. So I would say be always very careful when you read these recommendations, see if they are helpful to get you where you want, to get you closer to your objective and then apply them. Don't just apply any of this recommendation just because uh, Google is recommending. recommending. Google is rec making recommendation to increase your ad spend and make you more money, not necessarily for you to get uh, more revenue or conversions. And if any of these recommendations you don't like them, you can just again click on the uh, three dots and press uh, dismiss all. And the, la the next thing in the campaign page there is assets. Uh, we can review assets are your site links, callouts. Uh, structure snippet, any uh, asset that you have added to your campaigns, you can see here image assets, let's say site links, you'll see their performance, segment them and if you need and just review the performance of your assets and you can create a new site link here. So asset pages, just mm, all your assets in the account. And you can again select a specific campaign and see the assets uh, that are applied only to that specific campaign. And the last page in the campaigns menu is change history. Change history uh, shows your recent changes to the account, uh, who made that change, uh, what kind of change was done to which campaign, which ad group, and uh, it could be very helpful sometimes if any change is made by the Google Ads uh, auto recommendation. You can see here in the user section that the change was made by Google Ads, or if you have multiple users access to your account, it shows which user made that change. 
So change history is uh, very useful for tracking changes. Sometimes you see, you know, a significant change to your performance, whether increase or decrease in your performance on a specific, since a specific date, you can come to the change history, look if the, you made any specific change in that day, so you can attribute the improve or decrease in performance to that change. Next one, we go to the goals. Goals uh, has two options, is conversion and measurement. Conversion is your conversion actions, how you uh, track your conversions. You can create your conversion actions here uh, and see all your conversion actions. And uh, there is this option and uh, diagnostic if, uh, for example, you have added your, uh, you have ad integrated a third party tool, let's say Salesforce to your Google Ads account. Uh, and if there is something wrong, you can see here some uh, insight this, that whether that conversion action is uh, doing well or not. Uh, so conversion action is an important page hmm, to create your conversion action and track uh, your conversions, track the interaction of uh, users who click on your ads. You can click, uh, create a new conversion action here. Uh, the other ones, uh, if you have added any specific value, I don't want, I don't go to details of this uh, conversion action um, pages option because they are uh, generally very uh, technical and uh, you just set them up once at the beginning or either you or the technical person in your uh, company, your business, and you might not uh, re revisit them for the next six months until, unless you need to. Or uploads here, if you upload, for example, your offline conversion uh, data, your offline customer data here to improve the performance, you can upload here. The measurement attribution, it can give you some uh, helpful uh, insights. Uh, for example, how many days, uh, how many interaction takes for each uh, user uh, to have, a, uh, to do an action, to take an action on your website. Each conversion takes whether one, uh, one interaction, more than two interaction, and um, uh, or for some businesses, how many days uh, it takes for a user to first become a conversion, becomes a lead for you, and after that become a, a revenue, a paid uh, a customer, a paid revenue. Uh, the pass from lead to customer can be shown here, could be helpful to get some insights. Uh, the next menu that we are going to review, uh, review is tools. Tools uh, is an important men menu, tools and settings, let's say. Previously, it was called tools and settings, if I remember correctly. Let's review all the options one by one. Planning, a keyboard planner is uh, where you do your keyboard research. Uh, you can uh, search uh, for a specific keyboard here and see the search volume and do keyboard research for to build your campaign, to start your campaigns, and start your ad. Keyboard Planner is really helpful when you specifically want to start a new campaign or you want to add more keywords to the existing campaigns. You can either add a specific keyword, see suggestions, uh, or you can add, uh, let's say, your website and see what keywords Google suggests. Uh, performance planner is uh, for forecast. You can create a forecast plan for yourself based on your conversion, click, uh, con revenue, if you have revenue data. Uh, to make a format, forecast, uh, a plan uh, for the next week, next month, or next six months, let's say, uh, depends really on the settings and data of your campaigns. So, if sometimes you want to do a forecasting uh, for your business, how much you might going to spend on the ads and how much revenue or how many conversions you are going to receive, you can uh, utilize the performance planner and create a media plan for yourself. Reach planner is similar to performance planner, but it's for YouTube. Uh, how many reach, how much reach you are going to uh, get. Uh, 
if you are running a, you want to run videos on YouTube, create a, a rich media plan for your YouTube campaigns. And app advertising hub is if you have any application uh, that you for your business that you connected to your Google Ads account. So there are so many options here on how what to do with that app, conversion tracking, and many other options. The next one in tools uh, is shared library. Shared library, as it says, is shared, you know, you are shared across your account, across your campaigns. Audience manager, uh, all the uh, audiences in your account that are connected through either uh, Google Analytics, GA4, or any other source, you will see them here, list of your audiences. Uh, they are called share, shared library because your audience are at account level. Generally, any, anything that is at account level, they are called shared library, shared, because you can use that account level uh, element uh, in any of your campaigns. Exclusion list is your negative keyword list. Sometimes you create a negative keyword list. You add a bunch of keywords here and you assign uh, that list to some specific campaigns in your account. So uh, those campaigns, the ads in those campaigns won't show for any search term, any key negative keyword that are in this list. So instead of adding negative keywords one by one, you just create a list and add the list to the campaigns. We, each list can contain multiple keywords. So it can be very helpful negative keyword list, both for your performance optimization and also for organi uh, organizing your keyword list. And there is other option here, placement exclusion list is more again for YouTube and display campaigns. If there is any channel, any website uh, that you want, you don't want your display ads to show, you add it as a per, uh, exclusion list. Next one is brand list. Brand list uh, has, uh, is a, almost a new feature in Google Ads. There can be two uh, use cases for that. You create a brand list here based on the list of brand that exists, or if it doesn't exist, you can uh, ask Google to add it for you, uh, make a request. Uh, you can use it for two uh, reasons. Uh, one, uh, you can, if for example, you have a performance max campaign, you want to uh, exclude your brand terms from performance max. You create a brand list here, adding your brand as the, uh, in the list and add it as an exclusion to performance max because a lot of times advertisers don't want, uh, to sh uh, show ads in performance max for the brand searches of their campaign. I have another video showing you how to do that that you can watch. And also it has another uh, uh, use case that you might want to use. If you are running a brand campaign, you can use it as a restriction. So, and use those keywords as a ma broad match type, because usually advertisers prefer not to use broad match type for branded keywords because it might show non-brand search terms. But if you use restrictions and use broad match type, uh, you can still uh, get benefits of broad match type, but uh, only a specific to your brand campaign. So you won't have to worry about your ads showing for non-brand searches. Next one is assets library. Assets library is all your assets, again, images, headlines, uh, site links, all the list of your assets are here. Uh, that's, you can just view them. I mean, there's not so much to do here because if you want to make any changes for your assets, you will go to the uh, campaign and asset page, makes things so much easier. Uh, this is just the list, the library of your assets that are in the same place. And location group, uh, if uh, you have multiple locations, multiple GMBs that you can select them as a, create them as a group here.
Next one is uh, content suitability. It's for brand safety. Uh, you, for example, you don't want your uh, video ads or display ads show on some uh, specific topics. For example, here it says it has three option, option expanded inventory, a standard inventory, limited inventory uh, for graphic sexual content, excessive profan profanity, uh, or uh, some other options. You can select any of them. So your video ads or display ads won't show for those, uh, on those, uh, kind of website on those kind of videos. Uh, so this is uh, mostly for brand safety that uh, the recommended one is a standard, standard inventory and you can go ahead with that one. Data manager is the next option. This is when uh, you can have integration between your Google Ads account and other application whether they are uh, from google or third party application let's say you here you can connect your google ads account to your google analytics ga4 or google business profile or search console or youtube channel or if you have an application you can connect it to google play and there are other options here let's say bigquery and many other options salesforce so if you uh, want to connect uh, your Google Ads account to third party application, not necessarily third party, some of them are Google software, Google products, uh, you should come to the data manager and connect it here. And in most cases, probably it's uh, very, um, very um, common that you certainly want to connect your Google Ads to GA4, to Google Analytics. Or if you have Google Business Profile, why not? Just connect them together. Or even Search Console, uh, why not? You want to connect uh, Search Console to Google Ads. Or your CRM data, if you want to get data from Salesforce uh, to Google Ads, uh, you should connect it to Salesforce here for bigger businesses usually. Troubleshooting uh, has two options, policy manager and ad preview. Policy manager, if uh, you have some uh, disapproved uh, headline, disapproved ads, uh, here you will show the list. Uh, for example, if you use trademark in the ad text or something, and uh, you can just see all the policy had uh, all the ads, all the headlines, all the assets, all the ad copy that uh, or even images that were restricted based on the Google's policy. So here you can see the list and as a request for another review or if they are really uh, were restricted correctly, you can choose go change that image, change that ad copy. Ad preview and diagnosis, uh, it will uh, you can show your uh, the ads in a specific location. Let's say I am uh, currently in Canada, but uh, my ads are run, running in uh, Los Angeles. So here, here you see the location is uh, the uh, the location of my where my campaign is running. Then here I can uh, select a search term. Some of them are suggested by Google, and see how it will show in the search result, whether it shows or not. Here, I search orthodontics near me, but it says that your ads is not showing right now. And which keyword in that location matches with the search term that I put uh, and why it doesn't show. And there is a reason. Uh, here it says that your ad has a low ad rank for this search. That's why it's not showing at this point. If it doesn't show right now, it doesn't mean that it never shows. It's just uh your ad is not supposed to show all the time uh it's just you know for seeing ad preview and uh, see if there is any specific reason that it is showing or not the next one is bulk actions uh bulk actions has uh, some options rules scripts solution and upload rules and these are some automated uh, actions automation that you want to create in your action in your account or camp campaigns in rules for example let's say you created a new campaign 
Uh, but the campaign is going, supposed to start next week, starting next week, not, not today, not tomorrow. So you create a new rule, uh, that campaign rule, you select a specific campaign and you make an action. For example, enable campaigns next, a start of next month or pause campaigns at the end of this month. So, so in that case, you won't need to go enable or pause campaign uh, manually uh, because you created a rule, automation rule, and your campaign, uh, your action will uh, happen on that specific day that uh, you specified and the action will, uh, the rule will run. Uh, something really can be helpful, this rule, especially if your account is big and you have so many things to do, you want to automate and make things easier for you. Another one is the scripts. The scripts are some codes that you can you uh, can create, uh, you can add and create automation in your account based on the codes. Uh, there are so many available codes, uh, templates on Google, on internet that you can use, create some scripts so you don't have to necessarily know how to code. A scripts uh, could be helpful. Uh, there are some actions that are very common for some accounts, you just need to find that script, you put the codes here and save it. Uh, for example, every day, every month, that script is going to, to run and do an action time and time again. Usually scripts are for the actions that are very time consuming for yourself, so you use a script to make it simpler. Solution is a new feature again in Google Ads. It's the same as the scripts, but some default scripts by Google Ads uh, that Google has provided here for you uh, to automate your processes. Uh, could be helpful uh, and a script for to see ad performance or account summary or link checker, common ne negative list. Uh, so solution is the per default build uh, pre-made template scripts by Google Ads. And uploads, if you want to upload campaigns in bulk, let's say, or you need to upload a spreadsheet here, a spreadsheet here there is a template. Uh, personally, I have never used that because you can easily bulk upload your campaigns through Google Ads editor. I have another video that uh, tell uh, that teach you how to use Google Ads editor uh, from scratch that can be really helpful uh, many times to make changes to your campaigns uh, through editor uh, I would recommend to watch that video and learn how to work with Google Ads and make bulk changes to your campaigns and accounts Next one, budget and bidding, uh, shared budget. Uh, sometimes you have a fixed budget, but you have uh, three campaigns based on the targeting of your keywords or location targeting. You uh, don't want to spend more than that specific budget. For example, if your monthly budget is $1,000, you create a shared budget of $1,000 here, and all those campaigns will use this shared budget. So. And that $1,000 will be distributed based on the campaigns, based on how much they spend. And each campaign won't necessarily spend equal amount. It depends on the uh, bidding targets, I mean, demand and performance. So shared budget can be helpful, but at the same time, uh, you really need to know uh, what you are doing. You don't want your... Uh, top performing campaign to become limited by budget and most of the budget from the share budget uh, gets allocated to the lower performing or lower intention campaigns. Bid strategies are similar to shared budget. You can create some portfolio bid strategies, target CPA, target ROAS. If you have multiple campaigns that uh, you expect that you want the same uh, CPA, you want the same cost per acquisition or same target ROAS, you can uh, use portfolio bid strategies. So in that case, Google Ads, the Google across all those uh, campaigns in that portfolio bid strategy will try to reach your overall ROAS target or your CPA target. Your CPA in one campaign might be higher, in another campaign lower, but your overall target CPA out of all the campaigns in the 
portfolio bid strategy will be based on what you define. So portfolio bid strategy can be helpful sometimes too if you uh, want to become more advanced in your Google Ads journey. Adjustments has two options, seasonal and explosion. Seasonal, let's say, uh, is near Black Friday, you expect the conversion in Black Friday increase or conversion rate increase. It's a seasonality uh, event, so you will create a seasonality, uh, seasonality adjustment here uh, to increase budget for that time period. Uh, for Black Friday, you don't want your budget uh, to finish so uh, too soon, maybe you have more sales on Black Friday, or you are going to get closer to the Mother's Day, Father's Day. So in those uh, events, usually uh, the sales increase for many businesses. So you create a seasonality adjustment, uh, whether to increase your budget for those rates, or you say that no conversion rate is going to increase. So you adjust your conversion rate and based your adjustment. And uh, Google Ads uh, bidding strategy will adjust, will consider the increase in conversion rate uh, in the campaign uh, optimization. The other option is exclusion. Exclusion is uh, when there is a, a break in your data. Let's say your conversion tracking stops for working in a specific time period for some reason out of your control later you realize that oh conversion tracking is not working so you create an exclusion here like what i've done here uh, for the days of first to 13th of february and uh, i tell google that in that time period uh, i didn't have data the data in my cam in my account were not correct so in that in that what uh, happens is that Google Ads did exclude that the data for that time period in your bidding adjustment. So uh, Google Ad machine learning algorithms uh, will adjust when if uh, you don't have data, it can you know uh, impact neg impact the bidding strategies negatively, impact Google's machine learning negatively. But if you say Google uh, to Google, if you tell Google that. Uh, hey, the, the data in that time period in my account is wrong. I didn't have data or, uh, or the data was not correct. Mm. Google will exclude that time period, the data for that time period in its machine learning. So your campaign's performance won't be imba impacted. Could be really very helpful in these scenarios. Last one in the tools uh, menu is business data. Uh, business data is where you provide and manage multiple data sources, uh, such as data feeds uh, for ads, assets, and targeting for different campaigns across Google Ads. Probably you won't uh, need to deal with this page so much, so many times. Add customizer. Uh, are parameters that adapt your text, your text at your RSA to your responsive search at to the context of a user search. And uh, there might be some uh, other options here. Let's say uh, when I uh, create, want to create a business uh, a data feed and uh, dynamic ad feed. Uh, if you want to dynamically populate your ads with your products or services, or if you are uh, in the flights business, education business, uh, based on the courses or hotels, based on the rooms, uh, this dynamic ad feed can be he very helpful. Otherwise, you won't need to use that uh, because your services are fixed. But if your services constantly change, your prices constantly change for these kind of businesses, this dynamic ad feed could be helpful. Uh, the next menu that we have is billing, as it suggests, uh, uh, it's just your billing information, how you were charged, where you can set up uh, your billing uh, credit card information, uh, payment methods, you can see the documents, invoices, the, the time period that you were charged. So all the billing information is this menu. And the last one is admin. Admin, if uh, you, uh, is the settings of your account, the top, top, top level account, uh, account settings, 
uh, that you want to set up, account name, and any other option that you want to choose or not. Uh, because these are at account level, they will apply to all your campaigns. You don't need to uh, do it campaign by campaign. Preference is the time, the uh, time zone of your account that you can adjust, the language of your account, your uh, number for web format, some very basic uh, templates uh, that you usually create any account in any platform. Notifications, uh, you can uh, choose to receive, receive emails for any kind of changes or interaction in the account you can choose it here and access and security if you want to give access to uh, multiple people to manage your google ads account so here through access you can create an access and decide uh, what how much access you want to give them only read only or no you are allowed they are allowed to change to have access or not, to make changes to account or not. So this was the overview of the Google Ads interface, and it might uh, sound, uh, it might look uh, overwhelming at the beginning when you start working with the Google Ads uh, account, but after a while you will get used to that. As I said, there are only uh, some of these pages that are very important, campaign page, uh, you are going to spend most of the time there. Insights are most of uh, for reporting and analysis. Uh, some pages maybe you won't ever need to visit them at all, maybe once a year. So you don't have to worry about all these uh, multiple pages. Uh, just need to learn which uh, pages are the most important to you so you learn them uh, the most. Just need to learn which pages you need to, you are going to learn to use the most so, uh, you know where to find those pages and how to navigate through the interface. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any question about, uh, Google Ads interface or campaign performance, feel free to, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching this video.